guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. So lately, it seems like a bunch of the channels that I watch have been uploading Wii Sports content, and it's really been motivating me to head back to the good old Wii days. And since it's been a hot minute since my last Wii Sports Lost Bits video, figured now's a great time to come back to the series and check out one of the most nostalgic games on the console, 2009's Wii Sports Resort. Real quick before we jump in, just want to quickly plug my new channel, Tetrabit Clips, which, as the name suggests, will feature short clips of past videos and streams and such. So if you'd like to check it out, I'll have a link for you at the top of the description, and I hope to see you in the comments there. Anyways, with all that said, go grab your sunscreen, grab your nunchucks, it's time to find some Wii Sports Resort Lost Bits. Alright, you know what, I'm gonna throw you guys a curveball and let's start things off today with the game's unused graphics. First up, we got a whole set of different graphics for some unused placeholder transitions believed to have been intended for the sword play game for the screen showing the players about to battle. We got the blue L left graphic and the magenta right R graphic coming together top to bottom, head on, and then a whole bunch more of them coming together sideways. Next we have this dummy texture, which in classic dummy texture fashion, it explicitly tells us what it is. There are actually two of these textures which are identical, and they are found in a file for the Mi Balloons, specifically for the frisbee mode, as denoted by this FLD in the file name here. I only remember one type of balloon seen in the frisbee game, and that's the extra point balloons that you can aim for in the frisbee dog mode, so I reckon that these were placeholder graphics for those balloons used earlier in development. Then, similar to the last one, next are four different unused placeholder textures, conveniently numbered 1 through 4. Now these are titled Face Dummy 1 through 4, so these were probably placeholders for the Mii faces used throughout the game. And these aren't the only placeholders for that, as next there's this graphic of the default Mii head titled Mii Face Yellow. Not sure what the color yellow has to do with this guy. And then even more of a placeholder texture, next is this graphic of a Mii head with a Japanese character substituting for its face. Now this graphic carries the file name Mii Face Dummy, I assume a typo of dummy, and unsurprisingly the Japanese character on the face translates to temporary. Then lastly for the face placeholders, we got this large set of additional Mii faces. There are a whopping 80 different Mii faces here, conveniently numbered 1 through 80, with only the first 16 at the top appearing a bit larger. Based on the name of this file being Box Avatar Dummy 1, it being found in a Stadium Mii file, and the SWF here identifying that it was meant for the sword play mode, these faces here were probably used as placeholders for loading the Mii faces that are seen on the fans spectating the event with the larger faces I assume to be used for the Mii's closer to the player, and the rest for those further away. Then next up we got this wacky unused texture titled Effect Test. Although this JSK in the file path suggests that this was for the jet skiing or power cruising mode, it's currently unclear exactly what sort of effect this set of 16 differently colored squares was going to test. Next, we got an early, less stylized version of an A button for the UI in the game, and it looks like this is a leftover from a build that was shown off at E3 of 2008. Then we got this leftover texture of the bowling lanes from the first Wii Sports game that goes of course unused in the sequel here since the updated Wii Sports Resort logo is used instead. And speaking of the game's logo, there's this unused graphic of it that appears to be a very early version of it, as it's basically just the original Wii Sports logo with the small resort subtext here. The font sizes were of course basically inverted for the final design. Then next, although the texture itself isn't unused, hidden in the texture for the ping pong paddles are the front and side of a Wii Remote. Now, total speculation here, but maybe this could suggest that the handles of the paddles might have once used the remote texture instead of just wood. A bit of a stretch, sure, but hey, that'd be pretty damn cool. Then next, we got a pair of unused graphics for the bowling mode, which appear to have been once intended to be a tutorial graphic of sorts, instructing the player to press the A button to toggle between moving the Mii sideways and rotating the angle. And then lastly for the unused graphics, there are actually two leftover super low-res screenshots in the files. 
one of the swordplay mode titled Chanbara 2 Mini, and one for the archery mode titled Archery Mini 2. The screenshot of the swordplay mode is believed to have been taken from a build of Wii Sports Resort close to that of the one shown off at E3 2008, as the intro to the battle here features the Miis without their protective headgear that's seen in the final version. It's thought that both of these screenshots might have been placeholders for the graphic of the mode that's seen after selecting one of the sports from the main menu here. Then moving along, Wii Sports Resort has two unused audio tracks for us to check out. The first one is titled Result Win, and the FLD and JSK in the file name appear to show it was meant to be used for the Frisbee and Jet Ski or Power Cruising modes. Anyways, here's a quick sample of it. Now, honestly, that's quite the bop. Sure had the fingers of snapping. A shame it didn't make the cut. Then secondly, there's a track titled Stage Normal intended for the archery mode. So for every stage, save for the first one in the archery mode, a different jingle can be heard when starting the stage. In the final release, the first stage just plays the standard archery theme, but this unused audio file is the jingle that was once planned to be heard at the start of stage 1 here. It's unclear why exactly this track didn't make the cut, but either way, here's a quick sample of it, let me know what you think. Next, as a quick aside here, not unused or anything, but rather a little audio secret can be heard in the island flyover mode. When flying close to the lighthouse here, you can hear some beeping, and it turns out that this is actually Morse code. There are a total of three unique messages that can be decoded here that appear to be dialogue between two different characters. These include, does anyone out there know Morse code? Sorry, use your radio. Morse code takes forever. It sure does. And why does anyone use Morse code anymore? Good question. A neat little Easter egg, especially for those that actually know Morse code. Next up, Wii Sports Resort thankfully has some debugging functions left for us to access. And if you've watched the series enough, you know I'm a big fan of these and unused test rooms, which this game also has, and I'll tease a bit here, but we'll come back to those later. Anyways, back to the debug stuff, first up is one that's super easy to access that even all of you at home can do so on your copies of the game without any cheats or anything. Simply by holding a Wii Remote vertically and pressing A, B, down, 1, 2, up, minus, plus, minus, plus on the main title screen, some debug text will appear on the bottom of the screen, indicating the game's region as well as the build date and time. Not the most interesting debugging thing in the world, but its ease of access should definitely lend it some credit. Next, there are a few additional instances where debugging text can be pulled up, such as whatever this moji baked text is on the frisbee dog mode, as well as a second debug mode with text indicating the area question and balloon level. Now this debug feature is a bit more interesting as here you can actually cycle between various locations of both the balloons as well as the target locations. So I guess this was a way to test different targets quickly. Then there are also a few more debug things for the bowling mode including data for the NPCs, I guess behind the player. Now, those are cool and all, but now moving on, Wii Sports Resort has not one, not two, but at least four different debug menus left in the game, each for a respective sport. Wakeboarding, power cruising, air sports, as well as skydiving. The text for these menus were never localized outside of Japan, so with the moji baked text it looks quite messed up in other versions, but here is what it was meant to look like. Starting off with the air sports debug menu here, unfortunately this one has the fewest amount of options. The first option here translates to free mode, and as that suggests, this basically starts the island flyover game like normal with a 5 minute time limit. Then the second option here also starts the game like normal, but this time with no time limit. Now this is awesome, and I wish they kept this as a mode in the final game. You can just take all the time you want and really explore the island to your heart's content, without the unending pressure of a ticking timer. 
It's really too bad that this is locked to this debug menu. And the last option on this menu translates to Handle Test, which also starts the game, but this time with the camera locked far from the island. It's thought that this option was likely used as a camera test or a way to grab a good zoomed out screenshot of the island. Then moving on to the wakeboarding menu, the first two options, despite appearing different, both just start up the game as normal. But to make up for how lame those two are, the third option saves the day by loading up a normally unused test course. Here, despite still being seen in the water's reflection, basically all of the background objects, including the entire island, are removed, and the boat just drives around, giving you the wakes to trick off as it normally does. A pretty straightforward test room, but hey, every test room is pretty cool in my books. Next up is Sea Test, and for me, this just loaded this blank blue screen. Although not visually significant, in the background here, you can actually hear the waves of the sea. I can't really say I'm sure that this is working the way it was intended to. Then we got Island Test, and this appears to be a similar camera test to the one we saw with the Air Sports menu, but this time it doesn't seem to work properly and it's pretty empty. It isn't until you disable the fog on the screen and some water will appear in addition to what looks like chunks of the island or something. It almost looks like this is some sort of test of how the game handles stuff reflecting on the water. And then, to my disappointment, and I'm sure yours as well, the rest of the options here all just lead back to this same screen. To me, this is extra disappointing though, since some of the options here like Rigid Body Test, Human Dynamics Test, Fast Effect Test, and more, all sound like they would have had potential to be some really cool testing areas. On that note though, now let's move on to the next debug menu for the Power Cruising Sports. Here, the first option just starts the game as normal, go figure. The second starts the tutorial for the mode, basically the regular mode but with a timer. And what was kind of cool about this one is that the end goal post thing didn't work, so I was able to just keep driving on and on, and just explore the island however much I wanted. And I was also able to find this guy just chilling on this rock. How did he get there? And then, just like in wakeboarding, the third option loads up another normally unused test course. Similar to the other one, the background stuff is once again missing, and here we can see another simple test area with some floating markers indicating the main track, as well as this goal marker that doesn't seem to have any sort of functionality here. Next, this debug menu for power cruising actually has a second test area under sea test here, and this is a large, mostly empty area that you can just cruise around in to your heart's content. This area also has this strange plane of a red and green texture visible underwater, not too different from those seen in some other test rooms on this series. Also, another weird thing that I noticed here is that in the reflection in the water, the me is T-posing and is also missing his head. It's pretty unsettling. Anyways, another pretty simple test area, and based on this menu option sharing the C test title with the one on the wakeboarding menu, I'd reckon if it was working properly, it likely would have been something similar to this. And the similarities don't end there either, as Island Test brings up this still image just like in the wakeboarding menu, and once again, unfortunately, so do the rest of the options on this menu too. Well, except for Sea and Island Test, which loads up the same Sea Test test course we saw earlier, but this time without the Christmassy checkered texture. Again, it's unfortunate that a lot of these don't seem to work, and I stand by in thinking that these just aren't loading properly, but hopefully one day a way to get them working as intended is discovered. Then the last debug menu we'll talk about here is one that hasn't even been fully documented yet, and that's this one for skydiving. Now unfortunately, none of the options on this menu are functional, but the top text here translates to bonus. And then for the menu options, for the first three we got them starting with skydiving, with the parentheses containing physics base, combining poses, I'm assuming for the formations you can form during a skydive, and thirdly, avoiding objects. Then the fourth option translates to remote jacket, and the last one is remote me. Not too sure what exactly the last two could have really been. Just like with the other debug menus, it's quite unfortunate that these don't work as they sound like they could have been pretty cool. But at the end of the day, having debug menus left over like this is always great, and hey, we even got a few normally unused modes and test areas out of it, and that's certainly nothing to sneeze at. 
And last up for this video, in addition to the unused test areas that we saw in the debug menus, there are actually a few more unused areas that are left over in the game. First up, there are a total of three unused level routes for the wakeboarding sport numbered Wakeboard 4, 5, and 8. These I guess aren't technically unused areas, as all of the wakeboarding stages do take place in the same area, but rather they're unused routes that the motorboat would have taken. These three wakeboarding routes are basically ready to go for the game too, and can still be loaded in. In the interest of time, if you want to see more about them, I'll have a link to the video that I'm showing you here by XUniverse1 in the description, where they go showcase all three of these unused routes. And last up, found amongst the files for the Bicycle Sport is yet another test course, this time much more akin to what we've seen in the original Wii Sports video. Since it's found in the biking directory, and just based on everything that's here, it's quite likely that this was an area for testing how different things affect riding the bike in the mode. Here we got everything from some steps, platforms of different thicknesses, ramps of different inclines from 5 degrees to 45, and then even to some extreme angles all the way up to an 85 degree incline. These were all probably to test how the bike handles different angles, but 85 degrees? Man, that's basically riding into a wall. Next here, there's this ramp that takes you onto this platform, which based on the degrees here, this might have been some sort of terrain test of angles going from 90 degrees all the way up to 170. You can't really ride on these angles, so I'm not really sure exactly what part of biking this might have tested. Then beside this is another ramp and platform, and here it just looks like this was a test of dropping down steps and increasing size from 5 units down to just 0.25. And then once again dealing with angles, there's this section of the map which sees a wall angle decrease from 90 degrees down to 10 degrees. The only thing I can guess for this is that maybe this was a test for how the player would react when driving into obstacles at different angles. And lastly for this test room, we got a small collection here of ramps of varying widths, with one set being nice and smooth, and the other having some sharp angles instead. These of course were likely to test the difference in smooth ramp transitions compared to the sharper ones. Overall, not too bad of a test room, some stuff seemed more useful for testing the biking mechanics than others, but obviously I didn't develop this room, so I'm sure everything here had a good purpose. Definitely not the craziest test room that we've seen on the series, but it certainly isn't the smallest either, so it's a win in my books. Before we wrap up, I just want to mention that with this video, we're hardly scratching the surface of this game on the pre-release side of things, as since the Nintendo Giga Leaks of 2020, a whole bunch of really cool stuff for Wii Sports Resort has been discovered. I'd very much like to cover that stuff in a future video someday, so if you'd like to see me cover, please do let me know with a like or comment down below. I know some people think it's a meme, but guys, it really does help me gauge interest for future videos. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my Lost Bits video on the original Wii Sports if you haven't yet. Subscribe to find your way back in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.